hello. Welcome back to Clep's Garage. I'm your host, Bruce, and it's a cold, wintry day. It's just turning the first of the year, 2024, so it's time to start working in the shop. Maybe finish up some projects I got started. So here's one <laughs> that I started in 2008. <laughs> you know, I like to like to ease in the projects. Well, I guess I really didn't tell you what this is. So this is a 1927 Model T Ford. Uh, this was in the last year that Ford built the T's. They built these up until a couple months into 27. I forget which one it is. Shut down the factory, switched over, and like six months later, started building the Model A. It was, there's books out on that. It was very, very interesting. Anyhow, so this would have been like the last Model T. And this, this looks like a Model A. If you look this thing over, a lot of people think, oh, they just went from the T to the A. Well, there was actually a progression, and you can kind of see the changes. Uh, the big deal with the Model A was the drive line and the braking system, and, of course, the body styles and everything. But uh, So this one's more or less like a Model, Model A. Um, a friend of mine had this chassis and the fenders. They were all new old stock parts. They had never been on a car. This was never on the road, never been a, a Model T. So uh, he was going to build up a, uh, what knows, a depot hack or a station wagon. Uh, so he had me put the chassis together. And I think I finished that in 08. And we had a motor in it, not this one, but a different one. And uh, got it to the point where it needed a body. I said, what are you going to do for a body? So, well, we can buy one. So I started looking. Well, everybody that makes a body for a Model T is for 25 and older. Um, all the bodies are, are straight in line. They're square. Uh, the 27, everything started getting streamlined. This this body is wider in the back and narrower in the front. And the side aprons are the same way. The fenders, of course, are, are straight, but they're different in the back. So everything on this car has to be different. So I decided, well, I'll just start building the body and basically make a station wagon. Well, I'm calling this a chuck wagon because I'm going to put a chuck box on the back. Tailgate's going to flip down to use as a table. There'll actually be a um, what's called a chuck boot underneath to put your Dutch ovens and, and cast iron skillets in. So uh, that's what this is going to be. So long story short, my friend decided he would just sell this car to me because he didn't want to do all that work. And like I said, it's been a while. And I got the idea down. I just I got to have everything the way I want it. So that's what this is. Let me show you the motor a little bit. So the motor is a standard 27 uh, Model T engine. Some of the big differences in, in 27 is they, they got like all the bugs out of them uh, from the earlier years. Uh, this this particular motor has a mounting bolts back here on the hog's head to keep the uh, flex out of the, the bottom pan. So that's different. I think they started that in 25, 6, somewhere in there. Anyhow, 27's all had that. That was a big improvement. Um, the water pump, of course, is different. Well, I don't have a water pump. This neck up here is, is different. And uh, on this one, I've installed a uh, Bosch distributor, which uh, was available back in the day. So this is period accessory stuff. I also found an old uh, Zenith made a carburation system, which this is a lot bigger carburetor than a Model T carburetor. So I don't really know how this is going to work because I haven't even fired it up with this on there. But this, this is kind of a neat setup. We're going to try this. There will be an alternator on here because I'm going to run 12-volt negative ground. And because uh, I'm running, I'm going to run uh, pen trottings electronic ignition in there. The motor's been completely going through. I've built this up to run, so this has got a lot of a lot of niceies in there. It's got a scat crank, stipe cam, uh, high compression pistons, um, only transmission drums, shafts. Uh, this this motor's been been going through. So this should run really, really well. So that's why I'm taking my time on it, just uh, seeing what we can do with it. So this is the framework that uh, bolts onto that car, and it, it needed a you know a roof. So this is what we're going to use. So basically, this is a 
five foot wide by, well, it's 10 foot long. I don't need it that long. I want to cut it down. But it's really hard to find a board that's five foot wide. I didn't really want to piece one together. I wanted the overhang out here um, so I can put side curtains on here and drop them down. And also, if it rains, you're not going to get wet hardly with this hanging over. This doesn't hang over the fenders or anything. It's it's It'll look right. So today's project is cut this end off and uh, just going to do it right here on the on the framework. I'm using this um, electrical stuff here as a straight edge. I'll just be using a circular saw and uh, I'm going to whack off this much of the front. And then uh, we're going to round the ends because I don't like squared ends. I'll show you why I don't like squared ends. We'll look at Mr. Montelay here. Mr. Montelay has got nice round ends on it. You look at that top see how them are rounded isn't that pretty so we're going to do kind of the same the same treatment here we'll get it uh, round so i wonder what i can use um to make that curve hmm you know what i'm thinking right here we go we'll just use the steering wheel off of uh said vehicle for my radius i'll put that there like that yeah and i'll just take a pencil draw this line here and voila there is my curve <laughs> could it be that easy yes it's just that easy well let's see if we can get this cut off i gotta go find a helper to hold this while i'm cutting it so i don't like you know rip it off Well, that worked a lot better than I thought it was going to work. Of course, I've done this before where you uh, use Mr. Circular Saw on a straight edge. As long as you keep it up against that straight edge, you can get a nice cut. Now I'll, uh, I'll lay out the, uh, the radius curve. I'll use a, I'm not going to use a circular saw for that. I'll use a, uh, a regular saw. Wow, the camera's saw dusty. Ha! Man, that put out sawdust. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the uh, video and see where all that sawdust was going. Holy crap! All right, so I decided to use this steering wheel with the uh, center out of it because it lays flat and these screws are at 90 degree angles. So all I gotta do is line this screw up even with this side and this screw even with this side. Uh-huh, yeah, about like that. And I can just make a little mark and uh, draw my little line. What I'm going to do is cut them. Thank <laughs> you. 
well, you know what? I can't find my belt sander. That'd been real handy to go around here. I'm sure it'll turn up sooner or later. I just kind of knocked off the rough edges. There's some little pieces that plinked off here, which is okay, because this is going to be covered in vinyl. The underside is going to be uh, what shows, and that'll be um, that'll be uh, stained and then clear-coated, so I don't have any rough edges down there. Just kind of went around this so we don't turn anything off. Looks good to me. You know what? I'm distraught. It's time to jump my leg and go get a libation. I need something to drink. This is like work. I thought this was supposed to be a hobby. Huh. Kind of spitting rain or snow or ice or something. Oh well. Car needs wiped off anyhow. We'll just drive. Away. I don't know if I can start this thing one handed. This ought to be fun. I'll give it a little gas. Pull out the old choco. There you go. Put down a spark. Guess I better shut the door and keep the heat in. Won't that be fun? Watch the car roll away. Okay. Ah, I'm gonna go get a drink. <laughs> uh, that's a nice one. You know the heater don't work with a crap in this car. Probably because it don't have one. I'll turn my parking lights on so people can see me. I'll just leave it run so it stays warm. I think it's snowing. Ridiculous. Yeah, I know there's no heater, but I'll think it's warmer. All right, that was a successful run. Got my beverage, head back home. If I can shift. And maybe get on the right side of the road. slow down the speed limit is only 25 I'm going at least yeah, about 30 not the hair slow <laughs>
that wasn't that fun. Hold inside here and wipe it back off. Ugh, that's disgusting out here. Oh. I guess that ought to do it. Could it be that easy? Yes, it's just that easy. <laughs> All right, break's over. Get back to work, will ya? This ought to be fun. Now it's time to attach the wood deck to the metal framework. Of course, uh, this will get covered with vinyl. But i got to have a way to attach this down so it doesn't flop around, vibrate, and all that stuff. Um, probably back in the day, they would run screws down through here into wood. I don't have wood, and um, I don't like screws. They, they can come loose. So, got a better idea. I'm going to use Mr. 3 8 bolts, which I pre-drilled holes down here. Come up through the bottom, come up through the top. But, well, you don't want no nut up here showing, because I want this all nice and smooth with the vinyl canvas. So I've come up with this idea. These are, um, well, there's a name for these, and it escapes me right now. But uh, anyhow, they're like furniture leg holders or something. So these are three eighths, like a blind nut. What I'm going to do is drill a hole and sink them in and then countersink them. So I've tried this. Now here's the trick. In order to countersink this hole, you've got to use uh, like a Fostner bed. And that's a little teeny tiny hole. You can't just drill out this three eighths hole. Well, actually this is half inch here. And then come in here, this it'll move all around. So what I'm gonna do is I had to go out and find a an eighth inch long bit. I'm gonna mark the center with a centering punch. I'm going to drill up all the way through. That'll give me this nice little hole right here, which is eighth inch. But this Foster bit will fit down in there. Is it Foster Brooks bit? I think it's drunk, right? Foster Brooks. Or is it a Fostner? Or is it a Fastener? Or whatever. Anyhow, this one is a task force. So then I'm going to come down from the top so I can countersink this. Now this is upside down. but So there's how I'm going to get my depth. Then after I do that, I'm going to drill out the top with this half inch bit down until it hits the metal. So this will countersink down flush in the top. Then all I gotta do is run the bolt up through there. Probably put a lock washer on that to keep it from backing out. And that'll be done. This is the first one I'm gonna do. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. I've got eight to do total. Well, first we'll get our centering hole put in here. Now this goes. I don't do that. Hmm. Now, we'll try to drill a hole up through there. Uh, this ought to be fun. <laughs> this is like the, uh, remember the board game operation? You can't touch the sides. Uh, boy, that's... Uh, that doesn't look like fun. I'm not touching the sides. I'm also not finding that center hole. Whose bright idea was this again? All right, I figured out how to find that center hole after I punched it. I just put the bit up in there with my hands and felt it. Now I'm actually turning it by hand to get the hole started. So when I put the drill on it, I'll have it a nice hole there to, to line up with. Well, I figured out if I get this started in the hole and then put the drill on there, that's a lot easier than trying to find that with it uh, on the drill. Now, here's a trick. Next trick, see if I can hold this straight.
we're committed now. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, that's in the right place. Huh. Don't look too bad. Now, the fun part. Gonna be able to see this or not. So far, so good. So, this is uh, five inch plywood with 14 plies. I think I got plenty to go through. So there's the hole. You can see in the in the hole or not? Probably not. Anyhow, and here's this piece. So I test fit it that direction, drill the hole. Now we're gonna put it down in this way. Now it'll draw down in because it's got little little cleats here for it to draw down in the wood. And if you want, you can put a couple nails there to hold this, keep it from spinning, which I'll probably do. And uh, but this. This is just going to be a test piece to hold it in place while I drill the rest of them because I'm going to paint these so they don't rust. But uh, let's put the let's put the bolt up through there. Excuse the bad camera here. My camera guy's out and thinks it's a holiday. All right. So this bolt, yeah, it's a little bit long. Get, in, get a washer and lock washer so I can see what the final looks going to look like. This is probably the setup that it'll end up with, so we'll just see how this is going to work. So what I'm really doing right now is getting this one in there temporarily. I'm going to go up front and do the opposite corner so everything stays where it needs to be. I've got it clamped down, but that way I can drill the rest of the holes. And there you go. Look at that. Isn't that nice? I might have to grind a little bit off the top of that, but this way I can get it all down in there, figure out where everything's going to set, and voila. So that's going to be the top, and this is what the bottom's going to look like. So just have this bolt here, and if you ever want to take the top off, all you got to do is unscrew these, boom, top's off. Won't that be easy peasy? All right, uh, seven more to go. I won't bore you with that.
Just got to cut out the little corners and I put a board underneath here to support this so it don't break. Let's see how this goes. That was a pretty good night. I got the uh, hole cut in the top for the Mountain View sunroof or a moonroof. And um, I don't think I showed you this before, but uh, I've got the uh, rain gutter tack welded in here. This goes all the way around. There'll be two drains in these back corners to drain any water. This will also serve to uh, hold up the uh, the lid there when it's shut this it'll rest against this so there's two full reasons why that's on there so i've got that all done now i got to uh seam seal the bottom here and then i can get this painted uh, and then i need to get this um varnished and clear coated on this the underside and then uh, get some top material get a top put on this thing and then get it back on the car all right so it's time to put this in the old paint room All right, well, the framework is black, and that's going to do it for this episode of Klepp's Garage. I'm going to step out of here because I don't like breathing that crap. I can't uh, stress enough that if you're going to paint, especially with hardener in your paint, you need the proper equipment, a Tyvek suit, uh, the right kind of mask. 
a hat, gloves, and I even wear earplugs to keep any of the, the fumes from getting into your ears and giving you an ear infection. So I've been doing this for years. I don't like painting. I don't like what you have to do to go through it. I used to like the old lacquer. You could use a Kleenex with that stuff and it smelled really good. <laughs> but that's long gone. So get with the times. But anyhow, uh, yeah, so that's going to do it for this episode. Remember, drive them if you got them. In this case, paint them if you got them. And you can always brush paint too. You don't have to do it this way, but uh, the rest of the car looks nice. So this has to look somewhat nice. All right, we'll see ya.